Hey, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're going to be looking at Elysium. So this is going to be just the rules and setup video. If you want to see my thoughts and the playthrough, click on the link below. That would be awesome. So what is Elysium at a super high level and what are you trying to do? Well, we're demigods and we're collecting heroes, artifacts, quests. Ah, it's just cards. We're going to be collecting cards and basically selecting them with our totems and trying to score points and set collection. All right. So let's get started, but before we do, remember the three things. Please like, please subscribe, please comment on my videos. That would be amazing. Let's go. All right, for the setup, before we get started, there are a couple of tweaks depending on the gods you're playing with. Some of them will add boards or change up the game just a little bit. We'll talk about that during the god section, but this is just the base overall setup that I'll talk about right now. So you're gonna set out your temple like this. It actually looks like a temple. And then you have these, which are called quest boards. And oops, in the top left here, it'll tell you that these ones are used in a three and four player game. So you'll use these. There's another set for one and two players and you'll put them in numerical order up here. All right, then we'll take out some of our uh, general tokens. So these are trigger tokens. These are money tokens. And these are victory point chests. Just put them where everyone can reach them. This is called an epoch marker. Just a fancy word for turn marker. <laughs> we'll put it here. All right, now for the uh, interesting bit, we have to set up our god cards. So the game does come with eight gods, but you're only supposed to use five. So by default, they tell you to use Athena, Hades, Zeus, Hepatus, and uh, Poseidon. So uh, if you want for your first game, use these ones and leave the other three in the box. And what you're gonna need to do is shuffle all these cards together. Give it a good, good, good shuffle because you don't wanna have too many gods of the same type stuck together. Now, when you do that, you're gonna set up the player, well, sort of drafting area down here or a card selection area down here. So let's pretend these are all different kind of cards. And what you're gonna need to do is put out the number of cards equal to the number of players times three plus one. Now, that's Per the rules, what I would suggest is always put out 13 cards. I would say that because sometimes you need certain cards to come out to trigger a combo and if that doesn't come out then you're out of luck. And in a smaller player count it makes it a little friendlier because you'll have more choices of cards to play with and it becomes super cutthroat at 4 players. So just lay out your 13 cards or if you're playing with the real rules, 10 if you're three players. So this is 13 cards. There you go. So pretend they're all different, obviously. Next, we're going to set up our legend bonuses. So we're gonna have these circular tiles. So these ones are always used. I'll tell you in the rules how do you score these. And then you have a whole stack of other bonus tiles. So there's gonna be two for every god in the game, a five value and a two value. So you're gonna go through all these tokens and take out the 10 chits for the gods that you're playing with. For example, if I'm playing Poseidon, I'll take my five and my two and I'll put them out. All right, so you get all other eight chits. So there should be 13 chits in total there. Let's go to our player boards. Very simple. You give them a player board with four of these totems on it. You're gonna give them four gold each give them a uh, player marker here and then you give them very important one victory point for their numbered player uh, turn token here so if you're first player you'll get one if you're fourth player you get four and that's it that's the setup let's go to rules all right welcome to the rules section of the game here we are set up for four players <laughs> just as an example um, all right, so at a high level, what is Elysium? I already mentioned it during the intro. It's you're drafting cards here to add to your domain and then in phase three, you'll be moving them to your Elysium to try to score points and all cards that you draft all have special abilities. So they're one time a game triggers, every turn triggers, right away triggers, and so on, end of game triggers. And there you go. So how does the game work? <laughs> Very simple. So at at a high level first, before we get into the mechanics of the cards, the game's gonna last five rounds, very important. And every single round, you're gonna be doing the same four steps, okay? So let's go into detail on all those steps. So step one, by far the easiest, is just the cleanup step of the cards. So you're gonna clear off all these cards 
and you're gonna put 13 new cards out. So let's say there were a few cards left over, you clear them out and you'll add 13 more cards. All right. Step two, that's where the meat of the game is. That's where you're gonna do all your actions. Okay, so on your turn, you need to draft a card or a quest. And how that works is the prerequisite of any item you want to take is in the top right or above it if it's a quest. So for example, if I wanted to draft this card, any card, you can take any example, I would need to have a yellow and a blue totem in my tableau. So for example, at the start of a round, we all have our four totems ready. All right. No restrictions. You're always going to have all four at the beginning of the round. Now, that means I can basically draft any card I want. So let's say I really want to draft this card. I put this card into my domain. This is your domain up here. All right. After you draft a card or a quest, you need to give up a totem. It could be any totem. It doesn't even have to be tied to these colors here. So if I wanted, I'll give up my red totem and put it on the side. All right, strategic hint, the choice you make here will basically decide what else you'll be able to draft in future uh, rounds that turn, okay? All right, so the same thing goes for the quest. So every turn you're gonna be drafting one quest and three cards, so very important. You need to have a quest by the end of the round. All right, so if you draft three cards first, your fourth action is gonna be drafting a quest, guaranteed. Or if you draft the quest first, your next three uh, drafts are gonna be only cards. You can only have one quest and you'll have three cards. All right, so quest works the exact same way. So the prerequisite is up here. So for example, right now, I don't have my red totem anymore. That means I couldn't draft this quest. I can take this one, for example, and put this in my play area. All right. Now quest is gonna give you three pieces of information. It'll tell you what your turn order will be um, for the writing legends phase and for next turn and it'll tell you how much gold you'll get in the next phase and it'll tell you how many cards you can transfer from your domain into your Elysium in the next phase as well okay I'll leave that there all right so there's certain other things that can happen during your turn so for example, these cards all have effects and that's why you'd want to pick some over others, <laughs> obviously. So let's go over some of the card effects and why you trigger, you pick some over the others, okay? So on your turn, you can also activate cards. So that's where we're going to talk about these arrows, these circles, uh, uh, type of cards. So these cards here, arrows, they're triggered cards. So basically, if they're in your tableau, at any time in your t on your turn, you can tap it to do the effect at the bottom of the card. They're all fairly unique. I'll talk about some during the rules of every god, but just do the ability at the bottom. Circle works almost the same way, except for it's a one time per game benefit. You're gonna end up putting a circle on here when you draft the card. Right? And then when you wanna use the card, you just remove this trigger and then you do the effect at the bottom of the card. All right, and you return that to the supply. All right, other type of cards. You have these lightning bolts. These only get triggered as soon as you draft the card one time. So as soon as I would draft this card, I would do the ability down here, and then I wouldn't have to look at this card anymore because I've triggered the ability. All right, so that happens when I draft it, put in my tableau, trigger the ability. All right, the other type of cards, fairly unique here. It's the snake head uh, type thing. This is called the Eleusius. I can't even pronounce it properly. But this acts like a trigger. So you see the little arrow there? Only if you have another of these symbols in your tableau. So if you have only one of these in your tableau, you cannot activate it. It just sits there. If you have a second card with this symbol in your tableau, then you can tap both of them as if they were triggered. Uh, so arrow effects. All right. So you just trigger like you would a arrow card all right some extra other type of cards here you have some infinite that means permanent ability these just you just look at this power when a certain thing would happen for example here is when I would drop the citizen I would get a gold so when something would happen I would get a benefit um, then you would have these uh, writing of legend uh, 
to uh, markers here. This is during the Rite of Legend phase. You can trigger this ability. So that's phase three. We'll talk about that next. And then finally, some of the special gods do have special abilities like this, uh, Hades ones. They're all dealing with end of game stuff. So I'll talk about that during the God section coming up uh, later. All right, those are all the type of cards. Now I'm gonna circle back uh, one second here. What happens if you need to draft a card or a quest and you don't have the totem available in your tableau? So for example, if we're getting close to the end of the round, I only have green left, but uh, the green quest is gone. Or if I had to draft a card, all the green cards were taken by other players. Let's just say it like that. Well, if it's a card you need to take, what's going to happen is you're going to take any card on the in the tableau here, but you're going to turn it around and create a citizen. This is called a citizen, and you'll add a citizen to your domain. Okay. Now, if it's a quest you need to do that for, it's really bad. What you're going to do is take any quest you want, but you're going to turn it over to the other side instead of the uh, the red side. This side is always the same. You're going to have only one transfer to the writing of legend phase and only one gold. So it's really bad. Don't try not to do that. <laughs> You'd want to always take a uh, quest when it's on its red side. All right, those are all the type of cards and sort of what you're doing on your turn. So you're going to be triggering cards. That doesn't count as an action. Just do them when you want. And then you're going to be drafting either a card or a quest. Remember, every round you're going to be drafting one quest and three cards. No matter what. All right, let's go to the next phase. All right, phase three is the writing to legend phase. So let's get at it. Okay, this phase is all about moving cards from your domain into your Elysium so you can score at the end of the game. So only cards in your Elysium score at the end of the game. So it's useless to have all your cards up here if you haven't moved them down because then they won't score. Alright, strategic hint, you need to bring them down. Alright, so in this phase you're going to tackle a couple of things. First thing you're going to do is take your new turn order according to this number. So in this case, I'd be number two. My second thing you're going to do is for the gold and the victory point chits that are on here, you'll just grab them from the general supply and add them to your tableau. So you add your coins there and add your victory points there. All right. And then the next thing you're going to do is transfer cards. That's this little harp. This is going to transfer cards from your domain into your Elysium. All right. So this number is up to that many transfers. You can do less if you want. You can move just one card or zero cards, but you have up to two transfers. All right, so now a couple of things to consider when you move a card down into your Elysium. First thing is once you move a card into your Elysium, you can never activate the power anymore. All right, so keep that in mind. So if you really like a card and you would like to uh, trigger it every round, don't move it down just yet. You can move it down in a later round. All right, second thing to consider is the price to move a card down to your Elysium. That's the number of the card. All right, so if I want to move this number one down, it costs me one gold. Move three down, it'll be three gold. This would be a three, and then there's a two down there, it would cost me two. All right. And then the biggest thing to consider is when you start getting multiple cards down here, you start creating family legends or numbered legends. You sort of have to start picking right away. All right, so I'll show you with some examples in a round. So let's say in a round now I have two transfers. You can transfer two cards into your uh, Elysium. So let's just say I want to transfer um, this one and this two. Now the first card that you put down, you just put it down. It doesn't need to attach to anything yet because you don't have a second card. Oops. The second card you put down then you start having choices. Because this is a different color and a different number, well, it's not really a choice, you'll just create a new legend here, all right? So those are my two transfer the transfers for the round. Let's just go to the next round and pretend I have two more transfers, all right? Now, let's say I wanna transfer this card now into my Elysium. Now I have a big decision. I can either add this two to this legend here to create a family legend so it's basically all the same colors or I can add it to this legend here to create a numbered legend so 
So to have all the, the numbers. All right. Your choices could be dictated by the scoring. So look at your scoring card here. So the top part here are family scoring legends. So for every two, you'll get three points. And for every completed family legend, you'll get six points. And the numbered legends work the same way. So for every set of two, like this one here, it'll be two points. And if you end up with all five numbered legends, you get 12 points. Uh, all cards in all legends have to be unique. You can't put two black number twos in the twos and you can't put two number ones in the family legends here. All right. So when you create a legend or start a legend, you can't move the cards anymore. So now this is considered a numbered legend. I can't later on move this down here or move this out to a different legend. All right. So now this is stuck in a numbered legend. All right. So let's talk about these legends. Besides points, what else happens? So in a numbered legend, let's just say I did this instead. So a, a family legend, if you end up creating a family, which is a full set here, so one, two, and a three, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to these bonus chits here and you're gonna grab the highest number available. So let's say I was the first one to create a Hades set. I'll grab this tile and I'll get an extra five points at the end of the round, at the end of the game. All right. The next person to do will get two points and the person after that will get nothing. All right. So those are family legends. Numbered legends. Uh, work sort of the same way, except for one thing is that you're gonna look at these white chits. So whoever has the longest legend is gonna grab the chit. So if you're the first person to create a legend of two cards, of numbered legend you'll just take the, the chit so let's say here I have three well let's say I just create a one of two I'll grab this chit now if any other player would now get a, a longer legend than me I would have to give them this chit so if let's say another player would create a legend of three I would have to give him this because uh, he has a longer legend I can come back and add two more cards to my legend and beat his and retake this card but that's how these work. All right. Now the last thing to talk about in Legends is citizens. So we already talked about in phase two, there's a way to get these citizens. That's if you don't have the correct totems and you're forced to take one of these backwards looking uh, cards. These are called citizens. Now citizens could be moved into your Elysium here and they act as a wild. That's pretty amazing. But there's a, a big downfall for adding citizens down here is that they're negative two points at the end of the game for each citizen that you have. So if you have five citizens in your Elysium, that's negative 10 points. All right. And these are basically wild. So you can add it here to extend my Elysium of threes. I can add it here to extend my family Elysium. Um, so let's say, let's add a bunch of wilds here. <laughs> so it's five, sorry. So here, I would have completed my uh, my uh, legend of three, my threes legend, all right? This will score me 12 points, but minus four because I got two citizens on it. All right, so that's all this phase is. You're moving cards from your top to your bottom. Remember, you don't activate their abilities anymore. You'll score points at the end of the game for sets that you created, and that's it. Phase four, very easy. Step one, you move this down one, You'll take back all your four totems to get ready for next round. You'll untap all your cards if they've been tapped. And that's it. You're ready to go to the next one. Okay, let's briefly discuss the gods. I'll tell you what they're all about, what setup changes they include, and why you might want to add them or not to your game. All right. So Hades is great. He's the one that most of his cards give you powers to move uh more stuff from your domain into your elysium all right zeus it's all about victory points most of his cards just give you straight up victory points so he's the kind of the boringest one but sort of standard poseidon all right this one is all about take that if your group does not like take that do not play with this card he basically makes all other players lose something either gold victory points cards so on athena i love athena she's my favorite 
Uh, she's kind of like the sharing god. You always get a benefit and everyone else is going to get a benefit. So most of her cards have a benefit for you and then everyone else gets something else. Alright, it's pretty cool. Alright. Hermes, tricky to use. Their cards usually untap or add triggers back onto cards you've previously activated that round. So that's interesting. Hefa, I can't pronounce his name, just gives you gold. Most of his cards are all about gold, 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 gold. All right. Then we have two special ones. These are the only ones that add special things to the setup. So let's talk about Ares first. So he's all about collecting these PP points, which are these uh, helmets. And there's certain cards that let you score during the game according to how many you have. But mostly, whoever has the most at the end of the game is going to score extra points. So it's all about end game scoring whoever has the most of these. And then Apollo, who adds the most complicated setup. You can add this oracle board at the beginning of the game above the temple and then at the beginning of the every round you're gonna put four cards underneath the temple so i'll just simulate it let's just say it was up there you won't be able to see it if i don't put it that high all right and these cards his cards you can manipulate what's in the oracle all right but these cards as the start of the next round these cards will join the uh, card selection area here and then you refill the oracle uh, afterwards all right so some of his cards allow you to transfer cards into the oracle to maybe if you like those cards better or to draft directly from there and so on they're special cards just dealing with the oracle so those are the eight different kind of gods hopefully we'll eventually get an expansion but i doubt it to get even more but uh, those are all the rules so i'll see you at the playthrough